Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For this week's video, I would like to present another layout design. This one was actually finished some time ago, but I did not have any means of recording it because my computer microphone packed up altogether, and it's taken me a while to get one that works. The first microphone I bought was dead on arrival, and this one I have struggled to get it set up so that it actually makes a positive difference. Hopefully you can hear this better than some of my other videos. Anyway, this layout design is for a fairly good sized attic room. It is approximately 39 feet by almost 14. The knee walls along the sides, from memory, I think are 50 inches high. There's three dormer windows in the north wall, a larger one in the center and two smaller ones either side. There's also another window in the end wall and entry is via a door in the opposite end. Now the client wanted a three rail O scale layout and he wanted to run decent length trains and good size curves. And he wanted to leave enough space in the room for a couch as well. I initially came up with two basic footprints and around the walls with a peninsula and just wider bench work with more open space in the middle and no peninsula. At this point, just basically seeing how wide the room was and what would fit without cramping. And I felt that the plan without the peninsula was better. It also means that operators are walking in the highest part of the room instead of towards the sides where there's lower headroom. Here is a basic twice round continuous loop showing a couch on one side and possible location for an engine terminal on the other. Here is an alternative variation of the twice round, bringing one side forward with a narrow access aisle behind it, allowing the second loop to duck around behind it for a good size staging yard. And also I have shortened the loop slightly to make way for a larger couch and engine terminal. And I've shown how a swing gate might be usable on such a plan. Now the client did not particularly like just having a single loop. He preferred a double track main line so that he can run two trains simultaneously. And he was hoping for a folded dog bone layout in order to maximize the run. Now that is going to mean reducing the curve radius somewhat. Here I'm showing the approximate length of a 10 car train with a large locomotive, which is what he wanted to run. The red circles represent six foot diameter curves. And I'm not sure what the radius of the green one is. I think that was just working out what's the largest that would fit. The six foot curves are drawn in because the client has some locomotives that require that as an absolute minimum. And obviously on a double track, the outer curve needs to be bigger. And I was just seeing how much tolerance, how much leeway there was here. Here is the first actual folded dog bone plan that I drew in. I've tried to find room for a decent sized staging yard hidden behind the scenic area. And the idea behind this plan is that I have this nice big area in the northeast corner, in the top right corner, where we can build a switching town or something like that. Now, when the client saw this, he asked if the staging yard could be brought out into the open and made into a visible yard. So that's what I drew next. You've probably noticed the notation, the, stand, the town of Stevenson. The client did have some very specific ideas as to what he wanted to model in the way of a town. I will get to that later. And this plan tries to make use of the central area to incorporate a good size visible yard. Even though it's not really going to be laid out much like a prototype yard, it's just going to be visible staging. And we still have the option for a switching district in the top right corner. Here is a completely different idea. Taking the same basic facilities, but instead of having the staging yard on the continuous loop, it is now on a branch line accessible via a Y. Now it may not look like a Y, but if we take the three corners, one here, one there, and one there, it's basically just folded. So 
with the two mainline junctions and these crossovers, trains can get from the staging yard onto the main line in either direction and back again. And although this plan was twisted quite considerably, this is the one that the client decided he wanted to go with. Once again, we can see the length of the 10 car train with plus caboose and large locomotive superimposed on the plan near the yard area. Here is another version of it that greatly simplifies the connection to the main line. Instead of having a junction all back here and a track crossing over the visible lines and then going around the back, we have just a simple extended crossover in this corner. And ultimately I improved that again by moving it around to the southeast corner. But that was a later iteration. At about this time the client had asked about making use of the of the dormer windows. Now the engine terminal makes good use of the large one in the middle. For this alcove I'm suggesting that we put city buildings over and behind the track making the staging yard look a lot more like a cramped city yard. Although there doesn't seem to be any worthwhile way of using the other one. And another idea that I suggested in this plan was splitting the town of Stevens, leaving the basic non-rail serve structures inside the turnback curve and moving the industrial spur with its tractor dealer to a different part of the railroad where there was a lot more room for it. And although it does introduce some compromises, we did both feel that it did actually improve the overall accuracy of, of what he was trying to represent. This one attempts to bring the tractor dealer back into the town and use the longer spur for a different industry, but it really didn't work very well. So we ended up going back to the other plan. Note how the road is on a grade. So we have a grade crossing over one side and an over bridge over the other. There was a grade crossing on the prototype, but there was only one. So we didn't really want to have the road cross the same track twice. And also it was on quite a steep hill. So this version wins twice. This plan is showing the two halves of the town so in a little bit more detail, showing the approximate locations of the buildings. And the area around the tractor dealer is now approaching the proportions of the prototype. It has a very interesting arrangement with a stream in a culvert under one of the buildings. And although the benchwork is not wide enough here to include the whole building, there is a good opportunity for a half structure with the interior open to the aisle. Also, you may have noticed in the last couple of plans, I've incorporated some running loops on the main line. So a second staging area, allowing a lot more flexibility of running. There can be four trains out on the main line instead of just two, and the client can alternate them whenever he wants to. And also on this plan, although the original connection is still in, I've shown the alternative crossover, which actually improves the grade somewhat and makes this area in the corner a lot easier to scenic. Now we talked about the possibility of a small dock area. It was never intended to be a switching location. And with the track range that the client wanted to use, there are no curved turnouts available. So we're not gonna be able to hook up a spur in this area without using a substandard radius curve on the main line. As drawn, the plan exclusively uses their largest radius of turnout, which is 100 inches. Sorry, it's an 0100 curve, so 50 inch radius. But the client liked the idea of an abandoned spur, adding a lot of extra interest. He's not big into operation anyway. So two industrial spurs and the terminal style staging yard is plenty of switching for him. Now here is that same plan with the scenic suggestions drawn in. Note that I've now removed that extra connection. It's no longer needed. And I've shown how we can have a river running along the front edge because trains running alongside water are excellent photographic spots, particularly when one only models one bank of the river so that the other bank does not get in the way of the photo. So there are now three separate water features on the railroad, something which the client really liked. Now with these holding loops along the back, I felt that it was best not to have a backdrop along the central area. Instead, there's just a continuous tree line you know, hiding the opening, but still allowing partial visibility of trains in these loops, depending on one's viewing angle. And here is a view with the suggested elevations drawn in. 
So anyway, 42 inches is the low elevation at the low level staging and a good portion of the continuous run. It comes up to 44 inches along this side. Briefly drops back down to 43 to reduce the grade on the road. Then comes back up to 44 for this junction. So both the mainline junctions are at 44 and we gain six inches on the route up to the visible yard. Meaning that we've got fairly easy grades throughout. Here is another view, a clean view with all the annotations removed. So I'll leave this for my viewers to take a look. Please feel free to pause it if you want to. So with that, I will sign off and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.